I fall over and so can, if, can you really tell can you I start mean, to I, see it in both of them can you start to get a sense of if I'm seeing something out here as a skew it really comes back to my mind and my belief that it's possible for anything to be skewed mm -hmm. oh sure it's like there's nothing to be done out here mm -hmm. it's always bringing it back to my mind and the belief in my mind that would have me interpret it or see it the way I do Holy Spirit doesn't look at any of that and say, this is all, this is all askew. Mm -hmm. This is really messed up. There's, you know, this will never work. You know, it's the ego that looks at it out there and says, boy, this is bad news. Mm -hmm. This is not sure. the way it's supposed to be, you know. But there is a way of looking with the Holy Spirit and, and knowing that Oh, everything is in order. Divine order. Yeah, everything that's is it. in yeah. order. That is and, so and I don't have to want anything to be different mm -hmm. than it already is. That's where the pain <laughs> comes in. It's right. wanting anything Very to be different kind. than it is. Yeah. That's where the pain comes in. Well, then where is this answered prayer? I mean, when, so that when we pray, it says here that the, your prayers are always answered. But Oh, I don't know where it was in here. I hit it earlier. Talk about prayer then because... The whole reason for prayer, the concept that we've had, has always been to make the out here be what we think it should be. Or better. Better. So if I'm going to pray, for it won't work like that. No, so prayer doesn't do that. But this is saying Holy Spirit answers prayer or God answers yeah. prayer. Yeah. Let's go back. Well, I, thought, I thought prayer was going prayer. to make you perceive things different. But then, then you get into this will of God, and what is the will of God? And then they're saying the will of God is my will. It's all stirred up to me. It doesn't fit together. So, yeah, you raised two or three good yeah. questions yeah. in there. Got a lot whole thing. I'm good uh, material here. <laughs> yeah, like prayer, that. prayer is a good one because you know, since even from the Bible, seeking you shall find, knocking the doors shall be open. If you come through Eastern routes, the law of karma, you know. As you sow, you sow, show, you reap, and everything. However you want to take it, it's all this fundamental thing that giving and receiving are the same. Now, there's a part in the Song of Prayer, the Prayer of Forgiveness and Healing, where Jesus describes prayer as like a ladder, that when you're really bound into the world of form, you can't help but pray for form, you know? Help heal my child. Help protect Aunt Martha on her trip to India. Um, help... Um, end world hunger and poverty. You know, you can't help, but when you, if you believe in the reality of the things around you, how can you help but pray like that? And Jesus is saying, as he told Helen, you know, it's not wrong to pray in that way, but, but there are higher realms of prayer. And it gets back to what George was talking about when you start getting back to perceptual. You know, help me see this differently is a, is a prayer that the Course makes and says in many, many different ways. Because that's really bringing it back to it's, it's a perceptual problem, and I've got distorted perception, and I need another way to look at this. I need to see peace instead of this. And really, it comes at the deepest level as you go to the higher rungs of the ladder. It's described at one point. Jesus says, "Your prayer is your desire." So if your desire is single and whole, and your prayer, of course, is always answered, <laughs> then peace joy, you know, if your prayer is for God and nothing but God, you know, then the, the state that you receive is, is a state of, of joy and peace and everything. When you have, it's tainted with desires for other things, you know, uh, Marianne Williams in, the, in her book, um, I forget how she put it, do I want peace or do I want him to call? <laughs> says, yeah, that's what it was. I want him yeah. to call. You know, right. I mean, there's right. a prayer. You know, right. that's a good example of yeah. of a prayer in the sense that I, it's more important that he call me today, sometime today, than it, than my pieces. You know, and so if you can start to get at those levels of desire. How important it is to get in touch with our unconscious beliefs and to really start to see what the ego's beliefs are and what its purpose is, and then to say, hey, I don't want. I'm not going to keep plugging this and plying in. I'm not going to keep following this ego because I want peace. I don't want this pain and misery and that happiness. So that kind of addresses that idea of prayer. It, it certainly gets away from um, 
prayer for specifics in the sense that a lot of prayers, even among unity and, and a lot of uh, new age types of thinking, are very much tied into abundance and, and courses on abundance and everything, and, and literally praying, visualizing, using the power of the mind to visualize the kind of house, the kind of life, the kind of whatever you want. Once again, Jesus does not condemn it. But it's, a, it's more still worth, now in the middle run, that in a sense, you're, the experience, if you visualize something, and you hold that in mind, and you hold that in mind, and it seems to come, that's a powerful experience that, that there's some power to this mind thing, that, that, that my mind is powerful. It's a definitely an experience that, that flies in the face of I'm a weak, little, helpless nobody, and I'm at the whim and, and the victim of everything in the world. But what the Song of Prayer does in the Course in general says, okay, now you're starting to learn that your mind has power, and you actually can... can it seems to manifest things, you know, it seems that way. The script is written, it's already happened, you're still just watching the past, but it seems as if, experientially, the things are coming to me that I want and that I, try, I focus on, so my mind's got power. Then Jesus says, okay, now you're starting to see that your mind is powerful. How about peace as your only goal? Peace of mind, enlightenment, salvation. Take that powerful mind that you're starting to realize that you have. And, and give it to me, or give it to the Holy Spirit, and, and start putting peace as your goal. Peace is abstract. I mean, how, how do you quantify peace? You know, it's this abstract kind of purpose, again, it's hard to get a grasp on. How am I at peace when I'm with my, my, my brother or my sister? Peace and judgment don't go, <laughs> go together. Peace and interpretation, is, it, it definitely gives you a lot of experience. But those are like the higher rungs where Instead of praying for specifics, please bring me this, please give me that, please turn an end to world hunger, and so on and so forth. Please have it be a sunny day, or a hot sunny day, you know, on, when we're having our family picnic or whatever, you know. Instead of praying for specifics, you start to hold this abstract goal of peace in mind, and then allowing and accepting you don't have an investment in, in the form as much, and, and the peace starts to come because you're not invested in, in the form. And the joy starts to get so intense, you know, as you start to ascend up that ladder, that it's not seen as a sacrifice. That those things like that seem important, that praying for certain specifics, you know, seem like a real big deal. The joy starts to be so intense, from the well starts to bubble up inside so much, that it's like, oh, I can't believe <laughs> that I thought that that would have brought me happiness and peace. But at the time, sometimes you can't see that. You know, you need to have that experience of, of praying for something and getting it. So that kind of goes with prayer. And then you mentioned, mentioned will. And I think we touched on that last time, that God's will for his son, for, for us, is perfect happiness. And I, I like to, when it was put that way, I've heard all these things that I've grown up about. Well, it's God's will that people starve, and it's God's will that this happened and this and that. God's will is for perfect happiness. Now, the Course also goes on to say that, that God's will is not known in this world, that this world was made to cover over and to, to make up a will, an alien will, which is the ego, apart from God's will, which is where all pain and grief and misery come in, and that when we talk about free will, free will is when the mind has, has accepted the atonement and is healed, then the will is free, because the Father and the Son will are one, and the Son knows it. <laughs> the Son knows that His will is not apart from His Father. Jesus knew that is a fact. So, to speak of free will in this world is still talking about something that, you know, philosophers have said, you know, that's a big question, free will versus determinism, you know, it's been in philosophy this big debate for centuries and centuries, that um, the script is written, that everything that's happening on the screen has already happened. That's a that's a destiny argument if you've ever heard one, you know, predestination. It's all spun out and it's already happened. That's that's almost it's hard to fathom. That was in that instant. That was in that instant. When the mind latched on to the belief that it could separate from its creator. Yeah. And that people have a lot of resistance to that idea because that's like it gets to this free will and this this destiny. What do you mean? It's already happened. You mean it's it's all 
that's destiny. There's no choice in that. And, and from that point, just with that area, the perceptual world, the script is written. It's already happened. You've heard of psychics that can tell the future. All they're doing is reading the past. The, the past. <laughs> they're reading the past. Whether they call it the future or not, they're, just, they're reading the past. Cause, okay. cause the you mean past this is already uh, happening over with? Yes. In that instant, it was over? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because it the came answer went there? It came <coughs> right. Well, how come it seems like the system has stretched out over eons uh -huh. and eons? I mean, even in this lifetime, it seems like I've been here yeah. forever. That's right. the ego's perception. And the ego yeah. says, no, no, the past isn't over and gone. Like a blip. Keeps dragging it, bringing it in. It keeps wanting to keep the past alive. Am it, I ever going to get rid of this ego? That's what he tells us. That we, we can't help but let it go, you know? So, but the second part of that is, you know, a lot of times I had a sense of this destiny thing, you know, that there was something to this destiny thing, but I also had a lot of part of my mind that kept saying, wait a minute, where does choice come in? You know, like when I studied behaviorism and all these different things, like, you know, what do you mean I'm, I'm like a rat? <laughs> you can train me to be whatever you want. What, don't I have any choice in this, you know? And the Course is saying, yes. It's all over and done. This is all part of the unholy instant. And here's the present. This is the holy instant. And and you can decide to accept the atonement, which is in the holy instant. And at, this, at that instant, you'll see that the past is over and done. It's more and more going into the holy instant, which is in our mind. It's in the stillness. That's where the meditation and the quiet comes in. So the, the instant's over. And basically, from the ultimate metaphysical standpoint, you know, this whole perceptual world that seemed to happen, you know, God doesn't know about it, and that's kind of like, like, oh, my life's meaningless. <laughs> Even God doesn't Even know Even God doesn't it, know. Yeah. But, <laughs> but from, the, from a mind that believes that this is really happening, and, you know, that it's happening to me, and this is my life, and I, I've got this job, and these relationships, and I'm, I'm this person and everything, then Jesus said, here's your stepping stone, kind of like, you have decision, but really the only decision that you have since the past is over is which lens are you going to look at the projection with? Are you going to align with the ego or the Holy Spirit? And every instant, you have a choice to align with the ego or the Holy Spirit. What's your purpose going to be for the world? A lot of times it seems like we click into autopilot with the ego. We're so familiar with waking up, going through our routines, getting in our grooves and our ruts, and and it really seems deep and heavy. It seems like, gosh, this is a heavy rut. And that's those are just decisions lined up with the ego. But as we work with the course, he trains helps train our mind to decide more consistently with the Holy Spirit until the point comes when we can go down to that cornerstone, lift that up and see that the ego is just a silly belief. Not no reality at all. I could never have separated from my creator that's a silly idea it's a silly belief and all the thoughts and beliefs and concepts that are built that came from that little belief are all false as well so it, I really it's just like it's, it's good news because it gives us hope it can seem overwhelming it can seem like oh my gosh I haven't even made a dent like I've got to pick up all the grains on the ocean ocean beach and I've got a handful now <laughs> and it can seem that way and everything but all Jesus is asking for is our willingness you know just it's so he just says just focus on now it's all you got to keep your attention on just try to keep on how you feel right now and when you do start to feel upset just try to be willing to see it differently to lay aside your judgment and that simplifies it from this long contorted <laughs> linear thing it's like you know, and one of the ways the ego tries to come along on the spiritual journey is just that very thing of having you look at where you are and feeling overwhelmed and desperate and hopeless about, you know, getting to where you think you want to be. You know, it's like, that's a good ego trick, too. I mean, that'll pull you down as well as anything. You know, so, you know and when you start to entertain the thought of, oh, I'll never get there, you know or whatever, if you can just recognize that that too is an ego thought and then just disregard it, that's the best thing you can do with it. Recognize it's an ego thought and disregard it.